Hello everyone, this is Jozef Neut here and in this video I would like to bring to you a new tutorial about overset meshes with a little bit of a twist compared to the other overset tutorials. Okay, so first things first, let's get the tutorial case. For that we go to wiki.openfoam.com and then we go to the tutorials here. And then we scroll down to the collection by contributors. And then we look for my name here. And then the faucet and sync tutorial. It has been online now for a while. And I already recorded this tutorial, but the quality of the video was not the best. And I wanted to give you the best quality. So I'm now re-recording this tutorial again with hopefully a better quality. Okay, so here you will find the YouTube tutorial that you are currently watching. And yeah, so here's a short description. And what we need is we have to now go to my GitHub account where we can download the zip file of this tutorial. So just click download. Then we have this. Now, once we have this, you downloaded this, please extract it and then place it wherever you want to have your tutorial. Okay, now I downloaded and extracted the faucet and sync zip file and now I can go into it. And there I have now a couple of files. So you can, you have an all run script and also an all clean script and then you have two folders and if you're lazy just run the all run script and then ta -da, there you have the tutorial results but here in this video I would like to go through those steps uh, uh, the script step by step what and explain you what are those two folders and how you run the simulation and why those steps are required okay so first things first maybe let's just open up these two scripts and then take a look at what they do. So the old clean script just goes into those subfolders and then executes all clean in the subfolder. So nothing fancy here. And then what the all run script does, it goes first into the folder called overset mesh, runs an all run script dot pre there then it switches to the background folder. There it executes another all run script. And then you can choose whether you want to run the simulation in serial or in parallel. So here you can change it. I chose the parallel application because it's faster, but that's, that's all it is. So now we have to take a look at what uh, is what are these all clean scripts and what are these two all run scripts and what do they do? Okay, so first we go into overset mesh. And there we have these two scripts. So the all clean script does nothing else than the usual all clean scripts. It cleans your directory, it resets it to the current uh, status that uh, you can see here so we have a constant a system in constant we don't have anything and we only have some system files so this is the default uh, configuration in the overset um, folder and then we execute a couple of um, commands open form commands so first I create an open.foam file so this is nothing open form specific this is my uh, my way of doing things that to create this dot foam file and call it even open dot foam because in my opinion it just makes sense and then we start with a block mesh then we run a couple of additional um, commands but let's take a look at first uh, so a block mesh okay so what do we have in block mesh dictionary okay so we have eight vertices which define one block with uh, and as you can see it's a 2d simulation in the z direction we don't uh, have a resolution and then what we have here we have three boundaries overset one 
whatever that means, we will take a look at it a little bit later, then a dummy boundary called hole, and then the default faces, which are the front and back planes, just to define the empty direction to have a 2D case. Okay, so really nothing fancy. Um, if I go back to this page, this is why I have this, uh, um, these pictures here. So here you can see the over, kind of the overset mesh. Yeah, so this mesh that is on top of this background mesh without the hole is our initial block mesh. So if you don't believe me, <laughs> then let me just fire up version 2012 and then go into my documents and where do I have it? YouTube, overset tutorial and then faucet tensing, photo set tensing, and then overset mesh. So here we are. And if I now manually just execute the first command called block mesh. Uh, the first command was actually this one. Okay, so now what I do, I will just open up Paraview click apply and as you can see it is nothing fancy it's just a block and it has the shape of this final overset mesh okay so nothing fancy now let's take a look at the boundaries here default faces are the front and back planes then we have the overset planes which are these outer the four outer faces and then we have a dummy uh, boundary which we don't use at this point but we will use it soon enough okay so this is nothing fancy it's just a simple block mesh we can now progress to the next step um, maybe one important point is that uh, these four outer boundaries have to be of type overset already at this point Okay, so the next command that we will execute is toposet. And for that we will use the dictionary in system toposet dict underscore whole. So let me just bring it up. So what do we do here? So toposet creates cell sets or cell zones. And cell sets and cell zones are selections of cells. It's like if you have a GUI and then you drag your mouse around, for example, in Blender, you drag around your, mu um, your mouse around certain uh, nodes and you select them. They have a different color than the other ones and then they are stored in a selection. This is what we are doing here just without a GUI. Okay, so what do we do here? We have here three steps. And then the first step is creating um, something called box. And then we will select the cells inside and uh, select all the cells with a certain coordinate. So this coordinate is inside of this uh, volume. Then we will clear create a uh, then we will select um, only a small box. Why do we do that? So this small box is from minus 0 0.005. So let me just quickly show you, possibly with the help of... Okay, so from minus 0 0.005, from this uh, plane until plus, 0 0.005 so it's really in the center and then we select uh, uh, the, the, the y direction from plus 0 0.015 till 25 so if i now change this to y normal 0 0.015 so we start here and then we move up to 15, 25. So we are selecting the cells inside of this box. And then we have only the cells inside of this box and then we invert it. So then we select only the cells which are not inside of this box. 
So we sell everything outside of this box. And the idea behind this is to select only the cells and then uh, outside and then get rid of the, the box itself. And then this box is going to be kind of a faucet, a very simple faucet that then is used to inject water through and then fill up a sink. So, and then the, the idea here uh, behind this tutorial is that you do have overset tutorials which come with open form, which are on the wiki, but all of them have a flow on the background mesh. And then the overset mesh it only uh, has walls, which then um, modify the flow on the background mesh. Now, what I wanted to do here is to induce the flow on the overset mesh, so in the box have an inlet and then have the flow come out in the overset mesh and then this flow is then interpolated onto the background mesh and then induces a flow on the background mesh. Okay, so it's, in this case it's not a flow on the background mesh which is modified. Here the flow is induced on the overset mesh and then creates a flow on the background mesh. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so I hope that uh, I could visualize a little bit what we are going to do here. So let, uh, let me then just execute this command here. Okay, so yeah, so it selected the cell. So we have now 488. Maybe the first step is not even needed. Uh, so we have uh, 488 cells, everything outside of the box. And then we execute subset mesh, box, patch hole, and overwrite. Okay, so what is this? Uh, so here we define a cell set called box. So we want to create a subset mesh with uh, uh, defined by the cell set box. So keep all the cells which are in box and then create a patch called hole and then overwrite the previous mesh. And this is why we already created this whole entry to have a reserved seat for our patch here. Okay, so what this does, um, let me just show you, copy. No, that was not a good idea. Now copy, now I can execute it. And now it created a subset of 888 cells out of 512. And now if I get rid of the slice and refresh it, then now you can see that we do have a hole in our mesh. And now the whole boundary has faces in it. So it's not empty anymore. So these are the whole boundary faces. Okay, so now we have an overset, we have the front and back, and we have a hole. So cool that we can do that. Now in the next step, we use a second topo set command. And don't worry about this minus s and minus, uh, minus s1 and minus s2. It just gives uh, the run application command, the a number, which number it should uh, add on to the log file. Because with run application, the output is written automatically in a log file, and then it's going to be log.toposet.1 and log.toposet.2 for the second time. So this is just uh, this flag here. Okay, so, and since we are not writing it into a log file, we don't worry about that. Oh, again, copy. And then toposet.inlet, this had, did um, more than just a couple, two or three steps. And let me just show you here what happened here. Ah, sorry, first uh, things first, uh, let's go. It's better to open up the toposet file. So as you can see, now we have one, two, three, four, five steps. What do we do here? So here, we define a face set called boundary faces. And so before we selected cells, now we are selecting faces. And, and with the, the function patch to face, so look for a, a patch called hole. These are our 
or red faces. So they, they are selected in a selection. Then in the next step, we are just mirroring this selection and create a second selection called inlet faces. So we copy boundary faces and create inlet faces. And then from inlet faces, we create a sub selection, a so-called subset and with the function normal to face. So we only select uh, faces which have a, a normal in the positive y direction. Now, which one are these? So in open foam, if you remember back to my sec third tutorial, which was about block mesh, um, I mentioned that the normals always point, point out of the domain. So in, in the red cells, so let's just get rid of the others. So here we uh, only have faces with normals pointing in the positive y direction here in the bottom. So one, two, three, four, five, six cells which have a normal pointing in the positive y direction. And then you can have a tolerance. We don't need it because we have a blocky structure here. So we reduced our inlet faces to a selection of these bottom six faces. And then we create a second set of faces. We just copy boundary faces again, just like we did before. And now we subtract the inlet faces from faucet faces. So, so boundary faces are all of them. Then we make a copy of that. So we in faucet faces, we have all of them. And then we subtract these six faces from all of them. And then we end up with a selection called faucet faces, uh, which only include these four, six and four. So in some 14 faces. So this is the faucet and this is the inlet of the faucet or actually outlet, but for our domain, an inlet. And we, with that, we create a, a selection for, for two face selections, face sets. And then these will be then converted now into boundaries. Okay, so this is what we just did here. So as I mentioned, 14 faces in faucet faces and six faces in inlet faces. And these are the two which we require now. So let's go back to the very last uh, command called create patch and create patch has its own uh, dictionary. Yeah, and then we have now two, we create two patches, inlet one and faucet and it will, uh, the inlet has a type patch, like always an inlet has a type patch and the wall has a type wall and we construct it from sets, which we just created here. And we will, uh, the set is called inlet faces and the set is called fault set faces. So these names have to match up with these ones. So here you can select any name of your choosing. This is what you will then need in your boundary conditions. So we are creating inlet one and faucet and inlet one is going to be comprised of these six faces and then the 14 are going to be called faucet. Okay, so, so far so good. Copy. Oh, I did again the selection. Okay, so because pasting is a right click and if I have a selection here and I right click, then it's copies. So I lo lose my copy from Notepad++ with create patch. Now we created inlet one and faucet. And now if I now take a look at those, now I have my inlet face and my faucet. So well done. And then hole does not have any faces in it. Okay. So if I just take a look at the mesh about the boundary here, we have the overset faces, the empty faces, and then inlet and one and faucet. And then hole was uh, automatically deleted. So very good. So the first step is being done. So in, in this, in, uh, on this mesh, 
on the bottom, we will use this inlet to inject water and then it will flow downwards in the negative y direction and then in the, along these overset faces the results will be interpolated onto the background mesh and then uh, so, so once it is interpolated, then uh, it goes onto the ba background mesh, and for that we use this overset boundary for this interpolation. Okay, and then on the background mesh, the flow continues. Yeah, so let's go to the background mesh, because this overset mesh does not assume uh, the same mesh resolution. So you can use the different kinds of, uh, of mesh resolutions, yeah, so this is one of the advantages of the overset method. Background mesh, here we also have the two scripts. Good, so in the, the clean script just resets to its original form, which means <laughs> in this case that we have this 0.org, which is a very open sp form specific backup file, and then constant, without any polymesh yet and then system with the system settings okay but now let's go to the all run script here we have one two three four five six steps first we also create the open.foam file um, okay no so first go into background mesh the open.foam file and then what do we do we execute block mesh okay so what do we do here in block mesh dictionary we have 15 um, uh, vertices and three blocks and we have two boundaries now just to visualize it i have uh, may maybe that's the best uh, um, a picture to visualize it so what i have here you already can see the three blocks so you have this upper block with a certain resolution then you have this uh, middle block with a certain resolution and then this bottom block okay and this should be a 2d sync and i divided up into three regions because on the left hand side i wanted to have the wall up until this point until the height of the second block and on the right hand side I just wanted to have the height on the, until the first block and my idea is to fill up this uh, sink with water and then on this side water can then spill out and not on the other side just to see that as asymmetric effect okay and uh, so this is going to be a wall called uh, sink and then the outlet is going to be the outlet here in the top okay so nothing fancy uh, and i did not specify the default faces so the front and back faces because this is very handy in block mesh that all the faces that are not defined are automatically put into default faces and since i use the same name on the overset mesh they will automatically be merged when we merge the two meshes okay so let's get rid of this here okay so first things first let's just create the block mesh here okay and maybe even load it apply and now you can see that this is our background mesh with the sink and the outlet you can see sink and outlet and again default faces the front and back planes and our initial setup will look like that that our overset mesh is in the center here i have it at a certain point of time i don't even know by heart so yeah at 0 0.17 seconds is the mesh and then uh, something called cell types will come to that and then the flow at 0 0.17 seconds okay so so far so good then let's go to the next step which is merge meshes what does this it merges the two meshes and the syntax is that you have to define the the first mesh and then the second mesh 
Now the second mesh is rather obvious, so we go one level up and then the overset mesh that, that we just created. Uh, and then there is this dot and this dot is saying that in my current case folder where the, this uh, command is executed, take this as the first mesh and then the second mesh is then one level up and then down into overset mesh. And please overwrite my previous block mesh. Okay, let's just copy, paste. And now what happened? Now I will just uh, get rid of the overset mesh and refresh the mesh. And now they were merged. They are not connected. This is very important. So the overset mesh and the, the background mesh are not connected. And this is by design so uh, like this because we will interpolate between them. Okay, so we will induce the flow on the overset mesh on this inlet, the, the water will fall down and then it will be interpolated onto the background mesh. So, good, so maybe we can just go through the boundaries here again. So we have this uh, interpolation or the faces which then uh, generate the region of interpolation, then the inlet, which is here, then the faucet, and then the sink, which is this bottom one. And then we have the outlet on the top. And these are the most important boundaries. And then we have the front and back planes, of course, and then the entire, so the internal mesh, which are not the boundaries, but the cells inside of our mesh. Okay, good. And now we have to do one last thing before we do then the last thing uh, which uh, is uh, topo set copy and paste okay so this does one two three steps let's take a look at what we do here so no it's four steps so we create now a cell set called c1 which is a very non-descriptive name that not all well and we again put in a coordinate somewhere into the mesh and this is somewhere inside of the, the mesh and we select with that all the cells except the cells on the overset mesh. So this only selects uh, uh, cells on the background mesh because it is only part of the background mesh. And then we create a second cell set C1, which is nothing else than just a copy of C0. And then what we do, we invert the selection of the background cells. And the, the inversion is, of course, the cells on the overset mesh. So C0 selects all the cells in the background mesh. C1 selects all the cells on the overset mesh. You will see why we need this. And then C1 is converted into a cell zone. Now, and this is not the different cell sets are usually these kinds of operations and then you can uh, reduce some data to the mesh, but cell zones are being used for, cal the cal for the simulation as well. So this is one of the major difference between cell sets and cell zones. Basically, they are the same. They are just used for different things and th they grew just historically. Okay, so we created a cell zone, which are all the cells on the overset mesh, and we call that overset zones. And we will take a look at a bit later where we need C0, C1, and overset zone. Okay, so let's go back to the command. So restore zero directory is nothing else than typing in cp minus r. Uh, zero.org and then just create a zero folder sorry so the zero folder and now we execute set fields okay what is set fields what is in set fields dict so i hope you know what set fields is uh, so the default values that we will use for a field called zone id is one two three and then for alpha water, we will initialize everything with air. 
It is an interform simulation, a multi-phase simulation. If you don't have any experience with that, go to my multi-phase simulation project and you will know what I'm talking about. But then we use, we don't use now box to sell or cylinders to sell, but rather cell to sell, which then uses the set called C0. So all the cells on the background mesh and it gives them the zone ID zero. And then C1 and gives so all the overset mesh and gives it a zone ID one. So this with this, the solver can differentiate between the different zones and then where to interpolate. And then I also create a small lake in the bottom of uh, water, uh, on the bottom of the sinks, just to have a starting uh, level of water. So just, uh, just to take a look at it. So set fields, enter, okay. And then if I just now refresh it and then um, maybe just let's reload. That's possibly the best here. Alpha, yes. So as you can see, I started with a certain height and there are some visualization problems here because Paraview doesn't really understand this overset mesh concept so it will show you both meshes and then here they overlap and then set fields did reach these the center of these cells so it uh, a part of you assumes that the cells are filled the background mesh cells are filled up till this point and then the background mesh is filled up until this point this is just due to set fields yeah so we, you can reduce this with the refinement, but this is something that you have to assume and use and uh, just accept if you use overset mesh, which uh, if the mesh is not uh, co uh, overlapping and not coincidental, then you will have these kind of small errors. But this is what uh, the initial flow looks like. So we will inject water here and then this overset mesh will move in a certain pattern and then we will see what the flow will look like. Okay, so now we could start the simulation, but first I want to go through the case setup as well. So let's just go into zero uh, org uh, because we already modified the alpha file. Okay, so um, the sink, the faucet and the inlet are all zero gradient. Um, the inlet, I'm not even sure why I have this inlet here. Do we have an inlet here? No, it's just inlet one. Okay, so this is a relic. So sorry about that, you can just delete inlet here. So the sink and the faucet are walls where we usually assume a zero gradient for, for alpha. On the outlet, we assume inlet outlet with a backflow value of zero. On the inlet, we use a fixed value of one and then overset one is of type overset. Epsilon and uh, again, overset is of type overset. And you notice that the empty boundary condition in 2012 does not have to be defined anymore. As long as it's in the mesh and it's empty, that's fine. You don't have to define it anymore. Okay, and then the walls, sink and faucet are for epsilon uh, wall functions. We use this fancy inlet boundary condition where you uh, define the turbulent intensity and also a mixing scale for epsilon. So we use a mixing scale of 0 0.03. We use inlet outlet at the outlet, same for K, inlet outlet and then wall functions. And here we use an intensity of 5%. For new T, we calculate it at the inlet and the outlet. We use wall functions on the walls. And then for pressure, so this pressure is, uh, so pressure P is PRGH, which we will come to plus rho G and then the height. So buoyant pressure effects. And these are, this is calculated because we define the boundary condition on PRGH, which is just the dynamic pressure uh, induced by the velocity. So on walls and inlets where we fix the velocity, we use fixed flux pressure. And then at the, at the outlet, we fix the pressure to zero to atmospheric 
values. Point displacement, so we have zero gradient on the inlet and the faucet, so on the boundaries inside of the overset mesh, overset is overset and with the type zero gradient, so here we have to define something additional and all the others are uniform fixed value, so it is fixed value, so they don't move, so the sink doesn't move. This is what it means. For the velocity, okay, uh, let's go to zone ID first. So zone ID defines the, the ID of the zones to have to know about something about background mesh and an overset mesh. And so all the boundaries are set to zero gradient. And now we can go back to the velocity because this is important. So for the sink, I'm using uniform fixed value. So this is fixed value, zero, 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 just you can uh, extend it to have uh, more, more functionality than the simple fixed value. Then for the faucet, you have to use the so-called moving wall velocity. You use that also in AMI simulations if you are rotating a fan because you have a relative motion of your geometry of your mesh. And then this a simple fixed value 0, 0, 0 would not do because you have to account for this relative motion of the mesh. This works for a wall where you assume 0, 0, 0, but it does not work. For, you don't have an out of the box uh, boundary condition for inlets where you specify the velocity in a certain direction. It only You can only use moving wall velocity where you assume a velocity of zero, zero, zero. Okay, so first at the outlet, we use pressure inlet outlet velocity, and then at the inlet, we use a coded fixed value because this there is no such uh, boundary condition for inlets because this is the first tutorial which uses an inlet on an overset mesh because all the other overset tutorials available online, at least to my knowledge, and also in open form only have walls on the overset mesh. But now this is the first one to my knowledge again, which then also induces the flow. So has an inlet on the overset mesh. For that, we have to program our own uh, boundary condition. You can do that on the on case uh, level. You can also implement it as a special boundary condition and just use that boundary condition here. So for that, we have to include a header file. We have to include a couple of uh, libraries, um, yeah, options and libraries, and then we start with the code. So we have a couple of points here, and uh, we, I believe we don't even need all of them, but let's just go step by step. So first things first, I am defining my inlet velocity. So this is something like what I would write here. So three values here, I'm writing zero minus 0 0.5 and zero. So we have a velocity of 0 0.5 in the negative y direction. So this is pointing downwards. This is my inlet velocity. I tested it. This gave the best results, at least to me, the best results. Please feel free to modify it and then see what happens. And then we load the mesh in the boundary condition. Then we uh, look for the patch that we are currently working on. So inlet one, and then we also load the point, the old points, the previous points from the last time step. Then we create a vector field, which has the same size as the patch itself. And then um, we, uh, yeah, we just copy the coordinates and then we load the, uh, the delta T, uh, uh, the current delta T. And then what we do is so we take the current coordinates of the inlet patch we subtract the old points, so the, the, the coordinates of the inlet faces from the last time step. So this is S1 minus S2 divided by delta T is a velocity. So this is uh, the length that the mesh went through within a time step. So length divided by uh, delta T uh, time is velocities. And this is now the relative velocity of the mesh, this UP value. 
And this is something that we utilize here. So uh, I was uh, discussing this with Michael Aletto, who helped me setting up this tutorial. So thank you to Michael. He also has a couple of very interesting uh, tutorials on the wiki. Uh, so, and we discussed whether we need the normal velocity. We found that we don't need the normal velocity. So this is something that we could get rid of here. So currently we only need uh, the, uh, the 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 relative movement of the mesh, and uh, which is here, uh, which is here, up, uh, and uh, and this constant vector, and then this will calculate the relative correct relative inlet velocity that we require. Okay, so this is the most complex thing in this case tutorial, this coded boundary condition, but possibly you can use it also for your problems. Okay, now only easy things are coming, constant. Okay, then turbulence properties, as you may have guessed, given by epsilon and k, we are using the k epsilon model. You can modify it according to your needs. And we are using here two phases. It's interform uh, simulation, water and air. And we use the density and the kinematic viscosity of water. It's a Newtonian fluid. Same with air. And here we assume 0.0. .0. I'm not sure why. So we can just change it to the real value here. Or we can just... Um, you can uh, do it on your own time. We'll see what uh, is the difference if you use uh, 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 surface tension here. More important is the dynamic mesh here. And then we have uh, also a gravitational acceleration in the negative y direction. So if somehow the water is then pushed up, the uh, gravitation will it pull it down again in addition. Okay, so and now dynamic mesh dict. So we are using the dynamic overset uh, method and we are using a multi-body bo uh, body motion solver, which means that we could even use multiple overset regions, not just one. Um, yes, and now we come to the coefficients and here you see overset zones. So if, I, if you remember back, here in toposet, we created C0, C1, which we used in set fields as sets. Here we create, uh, define sets. And then we created a cell zone called overset zone. And here now we define those cells which then move. So the overset mesh will move and the background mesh will not. And I set up two functions, a linear function, which just goes from the center to the side and then leaves the domain that's not so uh, interesting. So I will just comment it out and then uncomment the second set of, of movement, which is an oscillating movement. So it goes to the left and to the right and left and to the right with a frequency of 30 and an amplitude of 0 0.03. This really nicely fits into the, into the domain. If you reduce it, then it's slower. If you increase it, then it's faster. Play around with this setting. It um, does make a difference. Next step is... Um, these four, because we already saw the rest. So FV solutions, these are standard settings. So I guess you can use it. If you have numerical issues, then you can play around with the end correctors here or the tolerances. But in my experience, these work nicely. Then here we have the discretization schemes. You can see we are using second order scheme for the Navier-Stokes equations, Van Leer for the, for the alpha equation, and then upwind for the turbulent values. We are running on four cores. So if you don't have four cores, just uh, switch back to the uh, serial uh, simulation, which was in the very first all run script here. So then just run it on one core. It will take longer. Okay, so decompose par, 
uh, and then control dig the very last one we load the overset libraries we just use the debug switches but that's not very important and we will use the solver called over inter dime foam so it is a dynamic mesh solver and overset dynamic mesh solver and it is a derivative of interfoam. We will run it for one minute and we will write out 100 time steps. And we have a max CO of 1.5, so we are very brave. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. So just, just copy, no, let, let's just run the, the, the parallel simulation okay so then we have now everything so decompose par and then now it, it compiles uh, so it, it is very important that you have the compilers installed if you don't have uh, uh, g++ compilers installed on your ubuntu or in your vsl then uh, install g++ ubuntu so how do I install it? It is, um, no, that's not, build essentials is what we need. Build essentials. Um, yeah, so here uh, just enter sudo apt update and then sudo apt get install build essential and this will then install you the G++ compilers which we need in order to build or own boundary condition that we just defined here for inlet one here. Okay. So yeah, and now we can just run not set fields inter no over inter dime form. I will write it into a log file called over inter dime form. Run it in the background and MPI run four processes okay now you don't see the command here from my face <laughs> but <laughs> by moving it i helped it okay so this will now run, start an mpi process with four processes running over inter dime foam in parallel mode and then it will write the output into a log file and run in the background this is the ampersand ah, no like this okay now this runs the simulation in the background we can tail it so we are currently at 0 0.01 seconds. Uh, we write out in 0 0.01 seconds. So if I go into processor one, we already have a couple of time steps. So I could just refresh it. Ah, decomposed case, don't forget. And now we have a couple of time steps here and as you can see there is some weird uh, uh, thing happening and this is paraview the visualization that you have two meshes or uh, overlaid so what i usually do is first we have to understand cell types okay so that's not the best way to understand cell types uh, because that's a bug Okay, let me just show you decomposed par. Okay, so th this is a bug. This is not something should, that should happen. So let's just reconstruct par latest, late, latest time. Okay. And let me just re uh, uh, open up this one time step here. So 0 0.13 and now yes so we have here um, cell types we have cells cells zero we have two and we have one so we have the green cells the red cells and the blue cells the blue cells are the normal cells where the calculation is normal red cells are uh, cells where we have a hole so th this is uh, on the background mesh so in the red cells, a hole is being assumed on the background mesh. And then in the green cells, we interpolate between the overset mesh and the background mesh. And what we, this means is that, um, and uh, this is why I meant that it, it is a bug because 
uh, in the decomposed case it had this weird uh, shape and if you reconstruct all the time step then it's fine it's just somehow in this decomposed case uh, part of you views it this way but so uh, here on the left hand side it works well so I don't know why it doesn't work on the right hand side and all it doesn't I don't even care uh, so what we could do we, what we can do we can now cut out the hole because the hole is a hole and it doesn't interest us so what I usually like to do is go to clip and then clip not by plane but by scalar and then go to the cell types and then let's say let's clip away all the cells which have a value higher than 1.2 so all the red cells yeah so that is it by inverting it it's already correct now it's a 2d case so it makes sense to use parallel projection and now we have it okay now we have it and it ah, okay so in this case it really makes sense to use this uh, so let's get rid of this open.form file to to check skip zero time because what happens uh, uh, with the clip if you go back to the first time step there is no such thing as cell types in the first time step so it defaults back to alpha water and then if you go it ass it assumes alpha water uh, is selected and it's not correct so you have to every time select go one type step further select cell types so it is a good idea to skip zero time just for this purpose and then the first time step is 0 0.01 and not zero anymore and now we have the correct visualization okay and as you can see it oscillates from the left to the right and maybe just to show you the the sink I'm just going to uh, load the sink itself uh, maybe I will even put in a plane a Z normal plane just to visualize the here and also here okay and now I want to show you only the sink that's fine use a color of black for the sink now we don't really see no here it's uh, I misclicked here color black and you can see that there is a very thin line and I can increase the thickness to five and now you can see that this is my sink this black line so here water is swapping over the sinks edge and this is what I wanted to happen here okay so we can now start and okay we don't care about this yeah as I mentioned these interpolation errors are always coming with the overset mesh so this is not, not something that you can skip this is something you have to accept you can reduce it by using a finer mesh but then of course your simulation will be slower okay and now we touch the surface we are the, the 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 water from this from the inlet is penetrating the water and then it mixes uh, the, the, the initial set of water and then we are filling it up and yeah and this movement is much more interesting than just a simple linear movement from the center to the right but good to know that you can leave the domain so you can just remove the faucet from the flow and now it's swapping over and then the water leaves the domain and goes into nirvana yeah and now we are at 50. yeah so let me just possibly go back here okay so now cell types no here cells I want to watch no I want to watch uh, the cell types here yes okay so the cell types and why was my initial block mesh this high and because the initial block mesh then defines the overset boundary and then the overset boundary then defines this cells with value uh, um, 
one, so the green cells. Uh, I did start initially with a smaller domain, which ended here. But then what happened is that the boundary condition that we utilize, uh, where is it? No, here, the zero gradient boundary condition, then just uh, numerically just pulled down the flow. And what you did not have is this, uh, is this uh, movement of the flow. So this tilting of the flow, it was just a direct flow downwards because the boundary condition numerically pulled down the velocity. So it, it does make sense to add a little bit more into the domain, but this really, uh, a little bit more into the overset mesh, but this really depends on the problem, on your problem. Okay, so now we can just wait and see yeah, so the simulation is now running on four cores and yeah so this is what it looks like so it is i really like this tutorial it it's not very scientific but it is a fun tutorial uh, but uh, the, the idea behind this is that you understand how overset works and how, how you have to set it up for your case. Because this case also works for 3D cases. There are overset tutorials which only use one block mesh dictionary and it creates two separate uh, not connected blocks which then uh, are being used, uh, being moved, but that is restricted by the fact that you only can only do this in block mesh. But with this, you can replace either the overset mesh or the background mesh or both with snappy hex mesh. Well, so, so you don't have to use block mesh. You can just create both the, in both cases or just one of them, a snappy hex mesh with snappy hex mesh dict or CF mesh. And it's the same procedure. So the same steps with the same boundaries, with the same types, just that you don't define your mesh with a block mesh, but rather with mesh dict or with snappy hex mesh dictionary. And this also works then with a 3D mesh. With a 3D mesh, you may encounter numeric problems, but then you have to play around with your numeric settings, as I mentioned here in FV Solutions. Okay, so where are we? We still have uh, some time to go. So maybe let's uh, recapture what we did here. Okay, so let me just close here most of the files here. Don't need, don't need. No, let me just close everything. This I don't need, this I, I will leave that. Get rid of these. And now we only have, okay, all, all clean scripts. This really just sets back everything into the original uh, um, setup. Okay, so what does this do? First, it creates the overset mesh by going into overset and running a subscript there, and then it uh, switches to the background mesh, set, uh, creates the background mesh, merges it, and then starts the simulation in parallel. Then this subscript all run dot pre creates just an open.foam file, which is deleted by the old clean script. Then it creates the first block mesh, which then defines the cell types, as I mentioned just before. Then we define the hole inside of this uh, inside of the block mesh. Then we get rid of the, the box, the hole inside of it. So we just throw it away with subset mesh. And then we uh, define the inlet and the faucet boundary. So the six inlet faces and the 14 faucet faces. And then we create the patches out of those cell sets. So inlet one and then faucet. And then once we have the, uh, the overset mesh, then we again in the second folder, we create a second open.foam file. We create the background mesh. We merge overset mesh with the background mesh and then we define two cell sets c0 and c1 just to reference the two um, the, the overset mesh and the background mesh 
and and we also create a cell zone which will then which we, we will move and the movement is in dynamic mesh dict then we create a copy of the backup folder then create we, we execute set fields which then uses those two cell sets called c0 and c1 to create the zone id so that the solver knows which one is the background mesh and which one is the overset mesh and then we can run the simulation and as i mentioned i have no idea why um, on the right hand side the cell types look so weird come on why the cell types are distorted like this as i mentioned if you reconstruct after the simulation then this will all be fine and i don't understand why it's only on the right hand side why it's correct on the left hand side and why it's wrong on the right hand side so this has something to do with para view visualization and parallel so i don't know just be aware that if you are uh, visualizing the decompose bar uh, results, uh, then you will see this. The simulation is did run correctly. It's just a visualization issue. Okay, so and that was actually it. What I wanted to show you. So it the simulation still runs here. So as I mentioned, I will put the the link to my um, to my uh, to this tutorial on the wiki as well as the link to my github account so this into the description box below so you can either take a look at my uh, short description here or the and these uh, three uh, uh, figures here or you can just directly go and then download the zip file and so you can start with your simulation immediately if you have not done so already okay so i think one last thing that i want to show you here is um okay let, let's just uh, do two things here okay so alpha water i want to visualize it between uh, no cell types, but here between zero and one. Okay, and now you may already know this or not uh, that you can add source and then alphabetical. And I never know this by heart. Annotate time is I believe yes. So now you can visualize which time step you are on. I really like personally the, the times font a bit smaller and i don't like the f so this is uh, f is how many uh, um, uh, zeros you have i really like to use two um, g if i'm not I, uh, yes so two g so we, with that we only have the two uh, numbers behind the comma and then i like to put in here an s for seconds so we know that it is zero point five nine seconds and we can position it into the lower right corner and then let's see how far we are here yeah we are almost finished okay and then uh, one last thing that i also i've never mentioned is that you can add for example a text okay so you can call it faucet and sync and let's use again the times and then you can put it into the right uh, of, uh, the top uh, corner or you can move it manually um, this should be i don't know 70 0 0.7 that's fine and then 0 0.5 maybe a bit further up faucet tensing so here you can just write anything uh, that you want and now the simulation should be at the end yes it did finish good so now uh, what i wanted to show you is how you export a video so first you can create a screenshot um, yeah so let's just uh, type in pick uh, full hd resolution that's not full hd that come on <laughs> 20 yes so 
this is full HD and now we have um, where do I have it? I saved it here. <laughs> okay, I saved it here. Um, and over set to torso. Now we have a, sc a screenshot. If you didn't know how to do that, and we can also create a, an animation. For that, I will move out of here and just create video. And now we could use Avi. I personally really like PNGs. And then full HD. Oh no, it crashed. <laughs> okay, so that's not good. What happened? Um, so it did create the first couple of... Uh, First couple of uh, pictures. Okay, then, sorry, I will cut the video and come back once I have the uh, the, 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 the the pictures here. Okay, so now I restarted Paraview and loaded everything, and I just uh, exported uh, the animation, and now as you can see, we have here uh, uh, one hundred. Uh, pictures I forgot to enable or uh, disable here skip zero time so this is why I have here the first uh, one so I just delete this and now what I personally really like to utilize is FFmpeg to bring these together why so FFmpeg you can install it uh, you can google it how to install FFmpeg in Ubuntu uh, and then you can install it and then we can just create um, uh, the frame rate. So we uh, wrote out 10 time steps, uh, no, 100 time steps. So for one second, but if I want to prolong it for 10 seconds, then I want to have 10 uh, images in one second. So I want to have a frame rate of 10, but you can change this to 25 if you want to have frame rate of 25. And then the input, it's the pics. Um, so I'm calling it, P or Paraview called it PPX and then four numbers, but the first number is always zero. And then it's percentage zero three, because then we have three numbers afterwards. D dot PNG, and then the quality, the video quality. So just a, a rather high number here. And then the output, so full set and sync.mp4 faucet and sync.mp4 this should do it yeah and then we have here a faucet and sync copy let's just put it here and the windows media player doesn't really like this format by ffmpeg so but uh, vlc has no problem with it so now you can uh, run it And as here you can see how the flow is going out of the sink on this side. It also goes a little bit out on, on the left hand side, but uh, I really like how then the, the faucet then pushes the at later stages the water to the side because it's so much water here, here and here again. <laughs> okay, so that was it. This is what I wanted to show you. I hope that you liked this tutorial and that you can utilize it for your problems. And uh, please just download the zip file. It is there on my GitHub account and give it a try. With that, I would like to thank you for watching and listening. And I hope to see you next time.